Don't you just love trains? Train Valley, with its colourful and bright style, loves them too. But don't be deceived by that fresh look, as beneath that pleasant exterior lies a challenging but immensely fun strategy puzzle game. Well, what the noggins is one of them, you ask? Well, although Train Valley looks like a rail sim, and it is that too in places, the main story mode plays out more like a puzzle game as you build routes between different stations that appear in different locations each time you play, getting more and more complex as you go through the story mode. As each train and its cargo becomes ready, you'll see the value of the shipment decline, so it's all about routing your trains the quickest and safest way possible in order to make money. Go bankrupt and it's all over for that level though the three challenges each main level has don't always have to be met in order for success. As each level progresses, more stations pop up and more trains need routing. It all gets a bit, oh my god, how do I do everything? It's going so fast. Uh." Fortunately though, you can halt trains once they set off, allowing you to amend, build or bulldoze tracks as needed. Points and junctions need to be manually adjusted for each train, and although that might sound a bit of a bind, it actually adds to the addictive quality of Train Valley. Trains can also crash unless you're careful. Tracks have only enough space for one engine at a time, which usually means waiting for one to pass before releasing another, or being really, really careful about how you lay your tracks. Oh, and building new points when a train is going through is a no-no, as I found out to my cost. Each level can be completed in about five to 10 minutes, but there's something compulsive about playing them and soon the hours rack up. It's a perfect example of how a casual-like game can ascend into a much more hardcore experience depending on how you want to play it. The story mode takes you through various locations and historical eras and is presented really beautifully in the form of like a stamp book at the beginning. Three seasons are available in early access, Europe, America and the USSR from around the 1820s to the 2020s, with a fourth Japanese era scheduled for release along with the main game. For a title in early access, Train Valley is pretty feature complete with only a few UI tweaks to come along with that Japanese section when it releases. The story mode levels might be challenging, but that's actually only part of the game. As I was playing through I thought this would be really really good if I didn't have any money restrictions or time pressure on my hands, and that's exactly the mode the developers added after many players asked for the same thing. This sandbox mode feels actually a little odd considering the environments are essentially the same, but the option to just build tracks and watch your trains go back and forth is pretty pleasing in that utterly train nerdy way. There's a fair range of trains that change through the ages and locations, and as you successfully deposit cargo from one station to another, they actually start to build up as the surrounding areas prosper. Train Valley is a very small train sim game, there's no getting away from that, and there's no huge tech trees or expansive maps like the Tycoon games. Uh, At times, I really wish it did have that scope, as I feel like the visual and interface have the makings of a really, really cool full-blown strategy game, but Train Valley is an awesome, small puzzle experience first, with a challenge that really belies its look. You're going to get frustrated and panicky about managing your trains and the tracks, but you'll also do it while having lots of fun. Train Valley is in early access on Steam and on the Humble Store, with the release scheduled for August or September this year. I do kind of feel that Train Valley will end up on the iPad in the end, and I think its interface is probably better suited to the touchscreen rather than using the mouse. But that's not actually meant as a negative, in fact it kind of speaks to how accessible the game is in the beginning, and it also belies the challenge that lies underneath. At a reasonable price, I think this is well worth a look, and I shall be keeping an eye on it as it goes through early access, and I'm eagerly awaiting the Japanese levels on release. Check it out. Please keep it here at GameWatcher.com for all the latest news, reviews and previews of PC games. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel and Twitter account to make sure you don't miss a thing. Thanks for watching.